Humans Need Not Apply is a show exploring artificial intelligence and machine learning. But actually what it's really doing is looking at our relationship as humans with artificial intelligence and with machines and where that relationship is going to move in the future. It brings up these, these really tough questions about what's important to us and what do we not want to automate. There's a lot of exhibits about robots in the arts and if they could really take over what we consider to be human. If I, if I pointed at you and pressed this button on top, we're going to get a little narration of what it saw. The light is on the table and the room is still in the air. It's really about helping us reach beyond our native capacities as humans and produce work that we would not have been able to produce otherwise. A lot of it was kind of the interface between humans and robots. So I thought that was interesting, yeah, it was really good. Humans and machines are equally important. They co-created each other since the beginning of time. We, we co-evolved with each other. And so to take one out of the equation doesn't make any sense. The humans need technology as much as technology needs humans. I really like this one just here that was like a parasite robot. It was really weird. You just had to keep moving your hand to not feel any kind of electric shock. It lost all control, like, it was so weird. It uses our muscle power to generate electricity by cranking this crank here. There's this reversal of the idea that we are always using machines. You know, there's a lot of technologies that we have that actually enforce a lot of control on us. I was just moving my hands and there was one of them who copied me perfectly and another one was kind of freestyling and I didn't look what the third was doing because I was really amazed what happened. Hopefully in the future we will be able to take avatars that will be operating on our behalf. Lady Shatterdy's Lover on Tinder. It was great. Weird. <laughs> it interacts with people and people don't know that it is actually a robot. <laughs> robots are creeping, creeping more into areas that would be considered quite personal and subjective. People really engage with a bot quite often and start to use the same language. Other people are quite repelled by it, realise that it is a bot. We have this human tendency to really project personalities and human traits onto other things that even if they don't really have them, we see them there because we, we really want to connect, we want to interact. So it's meant to, you know, a behavioural response, so I was like, all right, let's see what it does when it's, you know, ambushed. <laughs> People want to know how they should approach it based on how uh, they think it's perceiving the world, which I find interesting. Oh, he's sulking now. I just got my face all scanned, so now he recognizes me and his eyes get all happy when he recognizes me then. It's really cute. <laughs> I know that a lot of people are afraid about having their jobs automated by these technologies, but when you see some of them in real life, you can kind of realize that there are some things that humans should be doing and robots shouldn't be doing. We are sitting in the tickle salon. It's not replacing uh, anything uh, like intimacy between people. It's just an addition. We came up with a scenario explaining what happens once the robots get so efficient that they take over. Humans basically go back to an analog world where everything is communicated in an old way with handbills and flyers. Most popular culture takes it like Skynet or something like that, that they're going to take over the world, where this one's more we become their pets. What are some friendlier ways to look at this so that we can kind of laugh about it uh, instead of get so nervous about the future?